Hello friends, welcome back to another Gilmore Girls video. Today I'm going to be sharing my TBR for the Gilmore Girls readathon that is happening the first two weeks of October. I'm so excited, like that's such an understatement. I am so stoked for this readathon and I'm really, really excited about the books that I picked. So I specifically chose books that are going to make me feel the Gilmore Girls vibes, you know? So for example, I could have chosen Throne of Glass for the complicated love interest challenge, but I'm not gonna do that because I don't wanna read a fantasy book that's gonna make me feel like Gilmore Girls vibes, like that's, that's not really gonna work. So I'm choosing one that's like a contemporary where they're at school and they're students because that's closer to how Rory and Dean and Jess were in the show. Just all the ones that I picked are very atmospheric in the terms of like feeling like Gilmore Girls. Anyway, let's just jump into it. For the first challenge to read a book with a school setting, I have two that I might choose. One of them is... If We Were Villains by M.L. Rio. So this book takes place at a really fancy liberal arts school. I believe they're like dancers and singers and musicians and stuff, but it specifically follows the Shakespearean actors. And then one of them dies and they're trying to figure out who did it and you as the reader are trying to like figure it out along with them and it's a mystery. And get this, the first sentence literally starts with, the time, September 1997. It had been a warm autumn so far. This is my first option for that or, or Ninth House by Lee Bardugo because I know I'm gonna be picking that up as soon as it comes out on October 8th. I know that it's supposedly really atmospheric and kind of creepy and there's magic involved and I think ghosts, maybe not but I just know that it's gonna be really good and I will definitely be picking that up. So it's gonna be either this one or Ninth House, I'm not sure yet. And then for the mother-daughter relationship challenge, I am going to be reading Where'd You Go Bernadette by Maria Semple, or S Semple. Sorry if I didn't say that right. You know what, I'm just gonna read you the little synopsis on the back because I think it does a great job. When 15-year-old B claims a family trip to Antarctica as a reward for perfect grades, her fiercely intelligent but agoraphobic mother, Bernadette, throws herself into preparations for the trip. Worn down by years of trying to live the Seattle life she never wanted, Bernadette is on the brink of a meltdown. As disaster follows disaster, she disappears, leaving her family to pick up the pieces, which is exactly what B does, weaving together emails, invoices, and school memos to reveal the secret past that Bernadette has been hiding for decades. Where'd You Go, Bernadette is an entertaining novel about a family coming to terms with who they are and the power of a daughter's love for her imperfect mother. It's like totally Rory and Lorelai. So I'm really excited for this. Okay, and then for a cozy book set during fall, I am going to be reading Pumpkin Heads by Rainbow Rowell. I am so, so, so excited for this. This is a graphic novel and it's still coming in the mail, so I don't have it yet. But it's about two friends in high school who work at a pumpkin patch and this is their last year before they graduate. It's their last year at the pumpkin patch. And I've heard that it's so, so, so cute and atmospheric. The graphics of the pumpkin patch are so adorable. So I'm really excited to be doing that one for the fall book. Plus, it'll be a really fast and easy read. It's good to throw in some graphic novels or some short books during a readathon as well because, you know, you don't want to get overwhelmed with all these big books. So, next challenge. The book I'm going to be reading for complicated love interests in honor of Rory Dean and Jess and Logan um, is going to be Frankly in Love by David Yoon. Could we all guess? Yeah, like we could have all guessed that this is the one that I would choose. It's about a Korean boy who is going to school and falls in love with a white girl, but his parents want him to date a Korean girl, you know. And if that doesn't even scream like Lane and her mom, I don't know what does. So he ends up fake dating a Korean girl, which I'm pretty sure Lane does as well. Not a girl, obviously, boy. And then I think he actually might end up falling for the Korean girl while he's dating his white girlfriend. So it's definitely going to be complicated and I'm really excited for it. I've only heard amazing things about this and how gorgeous are these blue sprayed edges. For the next book in a series that you haven't finished yet, I will be reading Tunnel of Bones by Victoria Schwab. I went into the first book, City of Ghosts, with just kind of like meh expectations because I only heard like so-so things about it, but it was so good, like so good. I just, I, I'm in love with that book and I'm so excited to start the second one. Plus, it's only a five hour long audiobook, so it's pretty short, totally doable for a readathon. So, yeah, I'm stoked. 
And I'm not gonna say too much about this one because it's a sequel, but I'll say the first one is about a young girl and her parents who are kind of like ghost hunters. And they get hired for a TV show where they're going to travel to some of the most haunted places to basically go ghost hunting. And the first place that they go is Scotland. And the whole first book takes place in Scotland. It's so atmospheric. They're walking down the streets and they're going to graveyards and it's just, perfect for autumn is perfect for halloween so yes i have high hopes for the second one and then for the last challenge i will be reading a book called the city baker's guide to country living on the very front of it it says super cozy okay it's gilmore girls like it literally says gilmore girls so I'm assuming that this is going to have a very similar feel and vibe of Gilmore Girls. It's about a big city baker who loses her job. I don't know if she loses her job or she quits, but she ends up going to Vermont and working at this little inn. Gilmore Girls vibes, anyone? And she is a pastry chef. She makes the most beautiful and delicious pastries. Suki, anyone? She finds out that the reason she was hired there was so that she could help them win the apple pie contest of that fall, I believe. I believe it's in the fall. Do you pick apples in the fall or like the summer? Crap, I need to educate myself. And then I'm pretty sure there's a love interest as well. And it's just, yeah, it's set in a small town in Vermont and there's lots of pastries and working at an inn and like how else, I mean, how much closer can a book get to Gilmore Girls? I don't know. So yeah, I'm really excited. Also, I'm so sorry. Um, it's getting really overcast as I'm filming this, so it's probably getting really dark right now. I will also, of course, be reading the group book, which is Talking As Fast As I Can by Lauren Graham. I'm really excited for this. If you guys aren't able to pick up a physical copy for it, for those of you who are reading and participating, um, you can find it on Scribd. I'm pretty sure you can find it on Libby. Those are two apps. Scribd, you do have to pay for, but you can do a free trial for it, and you can read as many books as you want for your first free month, and then cancel it, you don't have to pay anything. So that's an easy way that you could listen to this if you're into audiobooks. Um, if not, you can get on Amazon or hopefully your library has it. That is it. I hope that you were able to get some inspiration. If you are still struggling with any of the challenges or coming up with books to fit the challenges, just remember it's really up to you. We don't want you to read books that aren't already on your TBR or ones that you would be interested in. So if you can't find one that has Asian representation or one about a mother-daughter relationship, you can just wing it. And I mean, for example, you could read Harry Potter and say that the mother-daughter relationship is Ginny and Molly. You could read a book, like for example, I'm currently reading House of Salt and Sorrows and there's multiple times where they talk about different seafood and eating, you know, like octopus and fish and all this stuff. You could count that as food being included in the story. You are free to do whatever you would like and kind of change the challenges around a bit just so that they fit what you are interested in. If you guys have any questions, let me know down below. You guys are awesome and I cannot wait for October 1st and I will see you guys then. Peace out.